Hey everybody, today I have an incredibly easy tip for you on how to add color contrast in Photoshop. I have an example photo here for you. You can see the before picture, she has kind of yellow skin tones, the background is kind of washed out and it doesn't create a lot of pop. I'm going to show you how to use contrasting colors like the blue in the background and the yellow tones of her skin to make your subject pop out and your picture have more depth and richness to it. But first, I want to thank Skillshare for making this video possible. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 13,000 classes in photo, design, and more. Everyone can take a class, try a project, or even teach your own class. Get your two months free trial if you're one of the first 200 people, and you can do that by going to sdp.io slash Skillshare 7 and use the promo code Northrup7. That's for the first 200 people. Like I said, this is super simple to do and really fast, so it shouldn't take any time at all. First, let me go into my workspace and select the photography workspace. I have my original layer here, and I'll go down to Selective Color, and then it's going to bring up this color channel menu and all of these slider bars, and it always starts with red. I don't know why. I guess that's at the top, but I like to go all the way to the bottom and start with the color black first. And then um, a lot of it is experimentation. I like to slide the slider around and see which parts of the photo it impacts. And you can see it's mostly on the background so, since that's dark. So I'm going to slide it just ever so slightly. These sliders are really sensitive and you can see any tiny amount of change is pretty dramatic. So I'm just going to go plus two to darken the background. And then my model skin tones have a lot of yellow in them, as you can see, and I want to make those pop out and her eyes pop out by making the background more blue. So I'll go to the yellow slider and I'm going to slide it to the blue just a bit. And I like to go into the magenta and you can add a bit of magenta if you like and add some cyan just to make it a richer color blue. This is really a matter of personal taste. So go in and play with it, it's fun. You can try all different things. Um, I like to take snapshots of each different look that I try and compare it to the original to make sure that I haven't gone too far or I haven't gone too dramatic or unrealistic. You can do that by going into your history here and pressing the little camera icon. And then you have a snapshot if you just want to toggle between them. So you can see already I'm getting some nice results. So if I look at the before and after, I can see the background looks more blue and her eyes were already standing out, but I think that her skin lacks some warmth to it. It looks a bit flat still. So I'm gonna go in to my colors again and I'm gonna create a new layer. I like to create multiple layers with the selective color because for instance, I wanted to affect the blacks in the background of the photo, but not necessarily in her hair. Um, so the more layers you make, the more control you have. As you begin experimenting on your own, you'll see what I mean. All right, so let's again make another selective color layer. And I'll go into the neutrals. And I'm just going to play with the blacks again. And I can see that it's mostly on her skin. She has very fair skin. I th and I think the yellow can have like a, well, it looks like kind of putrid, right? It's, it's not a very pretty color. So I'm actually just going to take a tiny bit of yellow out and then her skin tone becomes creamier. Um, and I like to add a tad of magenta. You can see this would be way too far. She looks a little strange. And that adds warmth to her skin. She has naturally kind of yellowish, reddish undertones. So that works well for her. Different skin tones for different people. You're going to find um, the colors that you choose to add to their skin will be different depending on your subject. Okay. And now we can toggle this layer on and off. 
and you can see the difference. And a nice thing about doing these separate layers, we can name this one skin and this one background. Come on, should be able to double click you. There we go. Now that we have it mostly in separate layers, you can go into your opacity. If you think you were a little bit too dramatic, you can just lower the opacity. Just like so. Another way that you have more control is I'm pressing control plus on my keyboard right now to zoom in and then using my space bar and dragging it. You may go into your background and toggle it and decide, oh, maybe there's too much blue in her hair. And then you can use this mask and you can get some of it out. I actually think that looks fine. But let's see here. I was looking to see if I added too much yellow or color to the whites of her eyes. I don't think so. I'm being pretty subtle here. An example of another way that I like to use uh, the selective color channel is I like to make the model's clothes pop. So if I go into whites here, look at how much I can brighten the whites in her dress. You can see that it also makes her skin look a little bit too shiny, but that's okay. That's what the masking is for. So let's brighten up her dress. and then we'll go into the masking. And right now the mask is white, so we'll select a brush, and then I want black to be here, so I just press X between them, because when you're using this brush tool, you'll be, you know, you'll be going between white and black quite a bit. So I'm using Control Plus on my keyboard. And I wanna take that white off of her face so that it doesn't look as shiny. I'm gonna put the opacity down so I can build on it. And I'm using a Wacom tablet now. People always ask me about it, that's why I bring it up. And I usually just put a link down in the description below so that you guys can see what I'm using. It's an old one, but it works. Let me just toggle this on and off so I can see if I'm making a difference. It's subtle, but it's there. Another thing that I like to do, I don't think that this model necessarily needs it, but sometimes I like to add a little extra color to the hair just to add some more contrast. Maybe it would be too close to the model skin color or too close to the background color, uh, or you wanna use the hair to add contrast to the eyes. Maybe I wanted to add a red undertone to her hair. You can do that using this too. You can do it to just about anything by changing. You can use it to change their makeup color or uh, their eye color. But for now, I just like these simple edits. You can see from my before and after that I showed you that I added some uh, a glow to her skin. That's something that you can do with dodging and burning. I have a few videos teaching about dodging and burning, but Skillshare also has a ton of Photoshop videos and you can check it out there. I've been watching a video by Meg Lewis and it's about the fundamentals of Photoshop. She teaches about uh, creating an efficient workflow, which is very important, and general tips and tricks, including how to make your very own action, which is helpful if you're doing dodging and burning. So you can check that out at Skillshare. The first 200 people to use our link get a free two-month trial. You can go to sdp.io slash Skillshare 7 and use the promo code Northrop7. We have all of that in the description below. Okay, so I basically, I showed you the basics. It's really simple to do, it's fun to do, and it adds a really editorial look to your pictures if you're doing it correctly. And it can make your pictures pop and that color contrast can just make your photo look so much richer and more interesting. So let's go to the history here and I'll take another snapshot and we can kind of toggle between my before, one of my first editions that I made using selective color, and then my final photo. And you can see that in the before and after, there's much more contrast. I like to step away for a bit, have a snack, kind of reacclimate my eyes to the real world, and then go back to my picture and see if there's anything that I don't like. I can see there's a bit too much blue maybe for my taste in her hair. It's easy to go back to the background, select the mask, select that brush again, and then brush some of it out. 
And I don't want to do too much because I like the photo to kind of have the, the colors meld just a little bit so that it looks natural. So let me do control Z. Hold on one second here. I'll go back to my snapshot, click on that mask again, and then I'm going to bring my opacity down so that I can build on it. I'm just going to brush some blue out of her hair so that her hair has more contrast with the background. I'm being a little bit sloppy because, you know, sometimes I rush so you guys don't have to sit here all day watching me obsess over my own picture. I'm taking another snapshot just to show you the difference. And you can see there she had more blue in her hair. And here is more of her natural hair color. And it's just popping from the background a bit more. So you can go in and you can really be a creep like me and change every little thing. There you go. It's so easy to do. And it, I think it adds a lot to your photo. So try it out. You can send me to your Instagram down below if you want, and I'll check out your pictures and comment on them. Thanks so much for watching, and thank you Skillshare for making this video possible. Again, you can get your free trial for two months if you're one of the first 200 people to use our special Skillshare link, and that's sdp.io slash Skillshare7, and the promo code is Northrop7. They have a bunch of cool videos there not just photography and Photoshop, but everything you can imagine. So check it out. Thanks so much.